Now let's take a look at some more sculpting techniques in ZBrush. So we're already well into this course and we're only now getting into some serious sculpting. And I think that's just a testament to how much you can do in ZBrush. There's so many tools and want to give you kind of a good taste of the different areas of ZBrush. But now that we've got our kind of base figured out, let's say we want to start to, to create a final sculpt for this. So the first thing that I would do is go ahead and subdivide this. And if you still have areas where you want to kind of move things around, you can use the move brush at your lower levels um, and kind of figure that out. But let's go ahead and just jump up to uh, to a high level. I'm going to turn off our poly frame. And so you can see this just, just gives us kind of a, a smooth version. And at this point, we can start to go in and uh, do some sculpting. So one of the ways we can start is just to define some sort of landmarks and creases. And so I'll just get Damien's standard brush here and dial the, the draw size down a little bit. And I want to make sure that symmetry is turned on. And I'm just going to come in and kind of define the brow there and kind of pull that up. And you can always go back and kind of smooth that out. But I'm just sort of, you know, defining things here. We can come in and sort of define the, the side of the nose there. We can also come in around the, the mouth and start to kind of define those areas. Also down under sort of the cheekbone, down from the, the ear, and maybe coming around here. And just sort of blocking in those areas. Maybe same thing around the, the chin here. Okay, we can also sharpen up areas. So by holding down um, Alt, we can create kind of the edge of the lip there. So let me kind of pull this up and into the lip, into the corner. Same thing here. Same thing on kind of the edge of the nose. Let's come in and I'm going to use the uh, clay buildup. And this is kind of cool to kind of build up mass and so I'm going to just come in here right around the on the brow and just kind of paint this in sculpt it in and then go back in and kind of smooth it out so kind of adding that mass for the for the brow there also up in here and then I'm just going to come in and start to add some detail coming across the nose and it, you can kind of see it's adding those built-in sort of wrinkles there, which we can go in and accentu accentuate later on. Same thing over here. I'll kind of build this up and smooth it back in. And I definitely want it to come in around the, the side of the mouth here and build up this bit over here. So I'll kind of build that up around the, the outside of the mouth coming up over the top. Same thing with the ear, I'll kind of build that down and across. Okay, and we can also, we can use Alt to kind of cut into the surface a little bit more. So we can kind of decide how we want this ear to look, maybe get a smaller draw size to kind of cut that in a little bit more and maybe cut in some areas here. Okay, and we can go back and forth we go back to our creasing brush there, up and over the ears, anywhere where you've got the sort of the bunching of the skin is going to be good to add those sort of wrinkles in. Coming in under the lip right here would be good to do. You also probably want to come down and add a little bit of Detail coming down and across here. Also along the brow, along the um, lids rather. Anywhere that's going to be moving a lot, you're going to have a lot of wrinkles. And go in and you know, kind of re-accentuate this. Now you're starting to get to the level of detail that you can, uh, you're kind of getting to the limit. And so you can subdivide again if you want to. And now you can come in and get kind of a, a better result. So we can kind of move move this line a little bit. 
Now, again, we talked about using, if we're getting, you know, lines that are a little bit too bumpy, we can go into our stroke and turn up lazy mouse. And then we can come in and get kind of a smoother line there. So I'll do kind of some wrinkles across the forehead. I don't really want to cross them over like that too much. And using a tablet's nice because you can really get some differences in the amount of pressure that you're using. And we'll just come in and start to add a little bit of that detail coming around. Let's do the same thing from the corner of the corner of the eye. We'll add a little bit of that kind of crow's feet wrinkling there in the corners. And just those little details really help to kind of sell it. We can come in and let me start to add kind of the nostril holes and then we could go back in and sort of push those in. Um, depending on how detailed you want to get, you could also add a little bit of detail here on the lip coming across. For the, uh, for the neck, we can come in and define that neck a little bit better. Kind of coming down here. Again, you can go either way as far as, you know, building in your, um, your landmark. So we've got kind of a, a clavicle here. I'll go back to clay build up and kind of pull this in. Maybe he's got like a an Adam's apple in there. And I, I like the clay build up just because it adds a little bit of variation and roughness, which in a case of organic model here, I think really helps sell it. But you can use the standard brush too to kind of pull things out. But I do like using clay buildup and then kind of smoothing it back in. It gives me a little bit more of natural variation that I find that I like. Um, we can come in here and add, you know, if we want to do any sort of like musculature, we could come in and add that across the, the arm there. Kind of break things up that way. So I'll just spend some time going across the body kind of looking for those areas where I feel like we can add that detail. Come in here, kind of adding that detail, coming in from under the leg. Maybe like the box trolls, you can get a little bit more uh, anatomical information there, just kind of a hint. And then maybe up here, whereas you can see it kind of bends over or kind of overlaps, we can come in there. Let's create a some sort of hints of uh, shoulder blades here. So we can come in there, do something like that. And then maybe emphasize that with a couple of lines. Again, under the arms is a good place to uh, to add some detail as well. And so just by, you know, just by kind of detailing some of these overlapping areas and some of the joints, just by doing that, you can get go a long way in, uh, in making your character kind of come to life a little bit. Uh, coming across there and then, you know, maybe up and across the belly. And then maybe he's got kind of a belly button there. So I really didn't add too much, uh, but you can go in and, for instance, on the hands, you can go in and add your creasing. There's going to be a lot of lines in there along the hands as well, back of the back of the knees, back of the legs, in the elbows. So just in those areas, go in and add a little bit of detail in there. You don't have to add detail all over the place. You can see just in the little bit that we did, um, from the beginning of this lesson, just in that little bit, it's already made a huge difference from where it was. It was just kind of a blank. Uh, but now we're starting to get in and see a little bit more of the structure that we might want. Okay, add a little bit more wrinkling there. Maybe coming down along the bottom of the cheek. And again, just going back and forth and kind of smoothing it out a little bit. Okay, so something like that. 
And then in the next lesson, we'll go in and uh, let's actually take a look at what we can do to really quickly add some variation across the skin surface. So we'll look at using surface noise for that.